Okay, so a little while back, I did a setup guide for the awesome Amiga FSUAE. So if you're new to FSUAE, it's a very simplified way of running Amiga games on your computer. So if you've not checked out FSUAE, check through my micro emulation playlists and you'll find that setup guide there. So this setup guide is going to assume that you're actually already using FSUAE. And what we're going to do with this is actually install Workbench. So watch how I do this, and it's going to look a little bit complex at times, so just follow exactly what I'm doing, and you're going to be fine. So first of all, you're going to need a Workbench 3.1, and for this, I'm using six of the disks for Workbench 3.1. So I've got Workbench, Storage, Local, Install, Fonts, and Extras. And this is the exact same set you would have had on an original Amiga if you was running 3.1, that is, at the time. So you can grab those at Amiga Forever, and I'll link that in my description. And of course, we're actually going to need FSUAE. Like I said, you need to set that up first, but this setup guide is going to assume you've already got this installed. So let's go and grab Classic Workbench, and the link's in my description too. So I'm going to just click on this UAE just here, and it weighs in at 174 megabyte. So once you've got that, it's going to download into a zipped file. Just open this one up and you should have a classic workbench folder inside containing lots of different subfolders. So what we need to do then is go into the FSUA directory. And just bear in mind, I'm using an older version of FSUA, but that's for reasons where I can get arcade mode working. But that's another tutorial. So what I'm going to do is actually use this hard drives folder for now. And if you don't have one in this directory, create yourself by right clicking new and then just type in folder. Well, obviously create folder first and then type it in as hard drives. So open up hard drives. And at the same time, what we're going to do is go back to that classic workbench we just downloaded and also go into hard disk. Inside of this hard disk folder, you're going to find software and two HDF files. So system ADVSP and system P96. If you just highlight all of those, just left click and highlight them all or click on one, control in A and that's gonna highlight every one of them. And let's just drag those over into the FSUA hard drives folder. This could take you a little bit of time. It's around a gigabyte. Okay, so once that's finished copying, let's just close down that workbench folder we just downloaded. We no longer need that one. And let's back out of hard drives and let's open up the FSUAE launcher. So double left click on the XE. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is open up FSUAE launcher. And if you've already got a configuration for this, then just go to new and that's going to create a new blank workspace to work from to get this up and running. First thing we're going to need to do then is go to Amiga model and switch this over to the A1200. And under disks, what we're going to do here is create a little list here for the media swap list section. So if we go to plus and you locate your workbench disks, remember you're going to need six of these for this. So workbench and just double left click on these as you go along and you need to add all six of these ADF files and fonts and extras. So once you've done that, we're going to head over to the hard disk tab at the top and we're going to put in place some hard disk files that we just downloaded, classic workbench. And what I'm going to do first with this is there's a little tab on the end here. You can click on this, it's browse for file. And you need to locate those HDF files that you just downloaded from Classic Workbench. So the first one you need to do is put this one in place. This is System P96. And for the second file, we're going to go to the folder this time. And we're going to just select the Software folder. Select Folder. And thirdly, we're going to go back to Browse for File. And this time we're going to add System ADVSP.HDF. Double left click on that. And you should be good to go. So you're on Amiga 1200 model. You've got six of your workbench disks installed. And under your hard drives, you have all three of these. So let's just go to start. And here you go. So this is what you should get for the first time. Now pay attention to what I'm doing on this part. So we're going to press return or that's enter on your keyboard. 
And this is just welcome you to Blood Witch's really cool classic workbench install. Press enter on your keyboard or return. So once you reach this screen, it's asking us to insert disk and press return to continue. So what you're gonna to need to do here is press F12 on your keyboard and it's gonna open up this menu for you. And I'm using my cursor keys and I'm gonna just use down to get to remove all media. So DFO is drive one or drive zero, which is empty. If you press enter on this, what we're gonna do is just find our workbench ADF, which is at the top if you just press enter on this one and then you can now press return or just let it continue to do what it's doing and as you can see it now recognizes it as a uh, workbench 3.1 and now it's now going to say launch and upgrade options and do you want to upgrade to workbench 3.1 i'm going to type in yes well y for yes and press enter and it will say valid workbench disk found and this is the installation process. So as we see, it's now installing. Okay, so the next prompt you're gonna get is to insert extra 3.1 disk. So again, what we're gonna do on this is just press F12 on the keyboard and removable media, and you can use the cursor keys again to do this. So workbench, and I'm gonna select the 3.1 extras image ADF that is. So, it's just here at the bottom, if I just press enter on that and press return. And just let this continuous installation process. Uh, right now, this thinks it's working on the real Amiga 1200. As you can hear from the mechanism clicking away, which is, I, I like this a lot, but... <laughs> Okay, so next up is asking us to insert fonts 3.1. So again, I'm gonna press F12 on the keyboard, removable media, and if I just press enter on the workbench here, I'm gonna then locate fonts. So fonts.adf, press enter and return. And this, this should come up, then just uh, press cancel and it should find it for you, so it's not a big problem. And this is now installing that fonts disk. And next up we got the install disk or the install.adf image we got. So once again, F12 and press enter on workbench fonts just here, which we've already used. And we're gonna look for install 3.1. So workbench 3.1 install, press enter. And you can now press enter or Press return like it's saying, and just let this bit install too. Next up, we got local, so F12, and I think you're getting uh, the idea of this now. Workbench, and we are going to select local, ADF. And of course, that clip just recognizes the disk image being put into the drive. And lastly, we got storage. So F12, workbench, and we're gonna look for storage. Press enter on this. Okay, so finally, we're gonna get the option of choosing old icons for workbench or a more modern look. So that's up to you. Just press enter on this. And I'm gonna just go for enable on this part and just let this install. And just let optimized classic workbench like it says, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so should you get stuck with this optimizing classic workbench, this will take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do on my keyboard, if I press Alt and Tab together, and what I'm going to do is just close this one down. So just highlight it at the bottom there and right click on it and go to close window and now close it down. And if we just go back to start to open it up again,
And you should now have Amiga Workbench 3.1, as you can see what I've got just here. So let me just show you a few, few things to clean this up and make it a little bit better. So if we exit back out of this by pressing Alt and Tab together, this will bring you back into Launcher. And from Launcher, we're then going to head over to that Amiga tick just there. If you left click on that and go to Settings, it says Start FSUAE in full screen mode. It's currently on off. If you turn this on and just close this down, what I'm going to do is close down this again and I'm going to open it back up and we should now go into a full screen mode as so. And the reason this is appearing is because I've obviously still got the workbench uh, disk inserted, but we can sort that out in a minute. So this is uh, 3.1 in full screen mode, and we still got some work to do just to clean this up to make the uh, resolution a little bit better. Okay, so you know how to work full screen mode, so let's just exit out of here again, all in tap. And that's going to bring us back here. So I'm going to close this down once again. So we've got full screen mode set up. And I'm going to make this a little bit better for you. We're going to upgrade this to an A4000 model. And what you need to do now is go back to the floppy tab at the top. And we're going to take all these away. So highlight one and then press minus. And this is going to take each one of these out. And once you removed all those disks, we're going to just go here and type in A1200 and then press save. We're going to go to home and change Amiga model to A4000. Next up, we're going to go to ROM and RAM and just make sure Zorro Free Fast Memory is checked. And choose 64 megabyte for this one. And then we're going to head over to expansions tab at the top and check graphics cards and go over to none. And you need to select the top option just here, UAE GFX, and enable UAE BD socket library. And finally, we're going to go back down to the main tab just here and type in Amiga 4000 and press save and press start. And here you go, so a beautiful looking Workbench 3.1, which looks pretty modern uh, considering Amiga, but this is cool, everything's ready to go from here. So I'll leave this part with you, and there's lots of little bits and pieces in there you can play around with, I'm sure you're going to have lots of fun. Just remember on Amiga, if you press right, you've got different options here to choose from, and also if you go to the bar at the top, and highlight the bar at the top, you can also enable settings tool shortcuts just there as well. And we got some games installed already under iGame. I'm going to just try and load this one up. And it's going to say F8 to quit this. This is, of course, a WHD loads game. And if this setup guide proves to be popular, what I'm going to do next time is actually show you how to load in your WHD load collection into FSUAE running Workbench 3.1. So F8 out of here. And that's it. Remember to close out of this altogether if you're running this in a full screen mode. It's all in tab. Or you can press F12 on your keyboards to enter this menu. And you can close it down from here. First of all, we need to go into the FSUAE directory. And your games, your WHD loads games, are going to go into the directory. Hard drives. And in hard drives, if you follow the guide earlier on, you're going to get another folder inside this, what's called a subfolder, and this is software. Inside software, you've got a games folder. And if you've got a number of games or you've got fairly little games, then I recommend creating a folder uh, A to Z and put your games inside each one of these. So for this setup guide, I've just downloaded a few games in uh, G. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to set these up. So first of all, we need to extract these. If you try scanning these once we're in FSUA Workbench, it's not going to scan them. It's not going to recognize. So you need to highlight your games and you need to extract them. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to literally extract just five games just here. So I'm going to highlight these, right click, 
WinRAR and its strats here. So you're going to get a few different folders come out, one for each game, and you're also going to get a .info file. So these just here, these zip files, you no longer need these, so we can delete these. So that's it, and then inside of each one of these folders is the game content. So obviously WHD loads are uh, compressing many different files, many different game disks into one. As we can see here, this game has two disks, but that's where WHD load works best. You don't have to keep swapping and changing the disks. So once you've done this, we're gonna go back to workbench again, so go to start. So once we're back into Workbench, which we set up earlier on, what we're going to do is just right click on the desktop and I'm going to go to Run, WHD Load and iGame. So once we're here, what we're next going to do is just head up towards the top of the screen, right click and if we go to Settings, Game Repositories and we're going to Add. So I'm going to go to Folder. And from here, parent button means backwards. So instead of back, uh, you know, so where it is, this is parent. And this is going to take you into the folder before the folder you're in. So folder again, sorry, parent again, and parent again. And I'm looking for that software directory where I've just extracted my games. And it was obviously in a software folder, which is here. And if I go to the games drawer, and the few games I just extracted for this setup guide to show you how to do this was in the G directory. So if I just go to G and I'm going to press OK. So we're next going to press Add. And as you can see, this is now added the category, the letter rather, G. So next up, what we're going to do is just close down game repositories. And if I go back to the top of the screen and press right click, I'm going to go to Actions and Scan Repositories. Let go of right, click on that one. And as you can see, it's now scanning my repositories. So as you know, uh, iGame comes with a few games with this installation. So just give this a little while. Obviously, if you've got many, many, many games, this is going to take you a little while to do it. And also bear in mind that some games will require extra kickstart roms which you can buy over on mega forever so once it's finished scanning i'm going to find my g games just here so we've got gadgets lost in time game force and so on if i just click on gadgets lost in time double left click and it opens up automatically into whd loads where to quit this game to press f10 is needed now, hopefully, I forgot to mention earlier on, but I'm going to mention it now. If you want your controller configured, you're going to have to follow my FSUA setup guide, and you'll find out how to do that there. But as you can see, mine's working, and it works fine. So, no idea what this game is. I've literally just got this one for this setup guide. So obviously to exit those WHD loads games, as it says, it's normally F10. If I try another one, uh, say Galactic Empire, whatever this is, again, we got F10 to quit. So I'm going to just quit out of that one straight away and quit. And that's it. But like I said, I uploaded the setup guide earlier on, and um, it's a fantastic system once you get this one set up. But I thought a lot of people out there might want this ASAP rather than just having Workbench installed what's the point you need to play some games so here it is so um anyway stay retro